Okay, so my childhood was, um, I lived in many different places when I was growing up. My dad was posted abroad, he used to work for a big corporation, so we were kind of um, here, there and everywhere. Um, I lived in Malaysia, uh, Hong Kong, apparently Kenya, I can't actually remember that. So we used to, <laughs> we used to move every three years pretty much um, and then back to England also so it was um, yeah it was all over the place um, and I feel probably because I couldn't stay long enough in one place um, the reason why I began drawing I think now looking back is because I wanted to kind of you know hold on to something uh, hold on to some time. I wanted, you know, I was really jealous of uh, my friends at that, that age because they lived in one house and they could just be. Whereas I felt, oh my God, I was chopping all over, chopping all over the place. Um, so that was, I think, that was quite a big influence on me in terms of not necessarily just drawing, just just I wanted to have something that I wanted to keep. And with drawing, with making art, you kind of did keep that. So I kind of relished that in a way, if that makes sense. My parents sent me to boarding school, so I would come to um, school here. Uh, I went to kind of a very minor public school, which I've got to say was a pretty terrible experience. Um, it was a bit like Tom, Tom Brown's school, school days actually. I mean it was, uh, they still had fagging. and So yeah, it was dreadful. So I was really quite relieved to leave that school and had a great time on my foundation course which was Epsom School of Art. Um, it was the first time I was able to be kind of free from this, all this constraint from this uh, school I was at. So that was great. And then from Epsom, Portsmouth Polytechnic, which uh, was pretty good actually. Um, they, we had a wonderful studio space, massive in terms of probably what students get today. Um, and we were pretty much left to our own devices, which in some, I mean, we weren't taught very much to be honest with you, but you know, we had some interesting tutors. Yeah, it was good. And then from there, um, I went to America, um, to Eastern Illinois University to, to do an MA, um, which was quite an eye-opener, actually. The Americans are very different in their... They were mu much more structured, you know, you had to do kind of writing and stuff like that, which was okay, but, um, yeah. And then... Um, a couple of years after that, I went to Italy to do some further studying at the Antonio Ratti Foundation, which was probably the first time I met some artists who I just thought, wow, this is great. Especially Carol Apple, for instance, was a tutor there. And no, there's something in Apple's work um, and a lot of the other artists, like, you know, I really admire Roy Oxnade. Um, that is wonderful. Rose Wiley, I just think it's the rawness as well, you know, just, just as you just, uh, I just like an attitude, she's got a great attitude, doesn't really care, she just draws and puts it down, and it's all about memory, I quite like memory, um, you know, my work's about memory as well, I suppose. Um, I'm interested in the fact that, you know, time, it becomes the the past becomes the future in a second. I quite like that idea. So I think there's something happening in in um, in that way with the paintings as well, um, cap cap capturing a moment and kind of savouring that moment. You're trying to do that. I mean, it's the same with photography, isn't it? I suppose they do it, but this is different. The paintings of my father who has been very well. I mean, I think again, I didn't really I don't really like to overthink things, but you know. This is what was happening at the time, so I paint it. This is what I do. I paint things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So my dad was not very well, um, so I painted him. So you've seen Villard, Bonnard, uh, 
um, so many Picasso, Matisse. I think I'm looking at a lot of, at the moment, I'm kind of more influenced in the kind of early modernists and uh, uh, even impressionists. I think it's just the way they use the paint, the touch of the paint is what interests me. And the way they transform their material um, into an image, I just, I just love that. I, I'm fascinated by that. I'm sort of looking back because I want to reject that kind of graphic, flat way of working. That's why I'm looking back. Um, because I think it's more relevant now to be more human about the way you make your art. So, yes, it might hark back a long time ago, but I think it is relevant because of those reasons, because you need a human touch, especially in today's digital uh, world, for me, anyway. Most of my work is really about the sensory experience. Um, so, you know, I, I love when I'm painting, I can hear the paintbrush. True, you know, you can hear the paintbrush and then you, you're, you're making these wonderful marks, the texture which of course you don't get in a digital reproduction, don't you? So this is what I'm trying to celebrate when I'm painting. And of course, you know, paintings will be reproduced on the internet or wherever, but the, nothing can actually beat the real experience of coming in front of a painting and experiencing these uh, sensory marks. Actually, when I was making that painting, you might be able to see it, but that painting over there, the, the sound was great on that. I always remember the sound of that painting. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the brush was making this amazing sound. <laughs> Hasn't happened, doesn't happen. It was, uh, you know, I don't treat my brushes very well, as you can see. And I had this, like, really, really crazy one, you know. And, and it made some amazing marks. And the sound was just fantastic. Um, says everything, yeah. So... Is that excitement? I don't know if that's excitement, but it's something, <laughs> and I love it, you know. And um, so, yeah. So it's not just it's not just the um, visual side. It's the whole thing of touch, sound. It's wonderful. For me, it's you know uh, sensory over intellect when it comes to painting. For me. I'm not saying everyone's like that, but for me, that's what it's about more than intellectualising it. It's, uh, it's all about the transforming of materials. And it's also a bit like playing tennis, you know, it's kind of, uh, I like to paint a lot. And so um, I have to be at it all the time. You know, it says, you know, if you get good at tennis, you have to hit thousands of balls. It's the same for me, I feel. When I'm painting, I have to make lots of paintings. Sometimes you hit the ball into the net, you make a bad painting, but you know, you have to keep hitting, and I think that's really important. You can plan your game of tennis, I suppose, can't you? Can you? I suppose so. You can check out the opponent or whatever. But at the end of the day, a ball comes towards you and you have to hit it and you have to be intuitive with that and that's just quite similar to my painting so I, I have to have that intuition involved as well. There's a really good story about Corre painting in the landscape and one of his students comes up to him because he was teaching his students painting and um, he said, oh God, I really love that tree you're painting. And Corre turns around and said, Oh, is that what I'm painting? Because he was so interested in just the formal qualities of that tree he was painting, the shape, the colour. He forgot in his concentration that he was painting a tree. And I suppose I do the same. I mean, I, you know, uh, it's an excuse for me to start painting. I've got this wonderful image I'm working from or something, and I'm, I'm really just... At, Initially, I'm just interested in the formal qualities. I'm looking at the shape, I'm looking at the tone, looking at the colour, 
and put it all together. That's how I, that's how I start. But if I was just doing that for the sake of doing it, it probably wouldn't be as meaningful as it could. So therefore, um, there has to be some connection with what I'm painting. I do realise that painting and drawing is its own language. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to speak the language. I'm trying to discover the language of painting and drawing. Because it, it's really difficult to put into words, isn't it? You can't... It's, it's not translatable. My work has changed um, beyond recognition over the past, I suppose, seven years. I mean, I used to be a completely abstract painter. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, yeah, no, I used to... Uh, they used to be quite minimal. They used to be... They were concerned with um, surface materials and process, really. Yeah, I know. Surprising. So, really, I mean, in a way, I always... When I was making these abstract works, um, I always felt I was a figurative painter when I was doing them in a strange sort of way. And I was concerned with layers, well, you know, loads of layers, very repetitive, building up the surface. They became really thick, layers, layers upon layers. And I guess now I'm kind of laying bare what I used to perhaps put in these layers. Uh, I used to have a suggestion of a, some image, perhaps. I mean, it was really subtle. <laughs> but now, I suppose, I'm kind of, I've laid that bare and I'm just, boom, I'm doing the image. So, yeah, that's how it's changed. So it's quite a dramatic change. And I think, I mean, you know, some of my abstract paintings were pretty good, actually. They were quite good, but I think, <laughs> I think for me, they became less meaningful for me because for the simple fact that uh, I just knew what I was doing too much and they were just becoming an object and it wasn't enough so I had to I had to try something else and I you know and that's when image making came to the fore and yeah I haven't looked back great love it I never know when a painting's finished really but you know I, I quite like that um, idea of paintings always being in flux actually uh, you know and a lot of paintings I do like always look quite unfinished anyway you know like Giacometti or something like that that I love that kind of unfinished quality sometimes that you get and, and perhaps paintings should never be finished uh, but yeah, yeah when I stop uh, painting it's quite a tricky moment of knowing when to stop really uh, and you have to live with the painting and if it's you know over the months and if it's not if it doesn't feel right it's not finished I guess but um, yeah I never I never know I, you, you know uh, although I do like to finish paintings more recently um, I've been trying to finish them in one session you know so I come to the studio uh, the whole day I paint maybe one painting maybe two paintings but um, and if I can finish if I can finish a painting in that time, I'll be very happy because there's something about the energy that you have when you're painting, the concentration, the energy. Even if you stop, you go and have a cup of tea, that energy is, is kind of lost. So that's quite interesting. So I've been toying with the idea and trying to finish it in one session and it seems to be good to continue that energy, if that makes sense. Sometimes I feel, with very traditional work, sometimes I feel that it could be more, it's more radical than anything sometimes. You know, you know like, um, like one little mark by Cezanne or something like that, it seems to be more radical. At the moment, I don't know why I'm feeling this, but I do, it's more radical than many contemporary artists today and, and that's something I'm, I'm trying to make sense of in the work at the moment and that's why it's perhaps getting a bit more even traditional, even more representational um, yeah, I'm trying to make sense of that
Yeah, just sometimes a few marks by someone who can paint is just much more radical than anything for me. 